Hey guys, it's Licious K from Climax Combo, and we're back with another Leaks of the Week. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've had a Leaks of the Week, but like I said in the previous video, we have both been really busy with Finals, and uh, yeah, finally we are done with Finals, so we can go back to making more videos. Uh, during the time of our hiatus, we have uh, missed the entire Modica movie uh, booster leaks. And I do apologize for those because those were quite exciting. But uh, the entire list for the Modica movie uh, booster is out now. So if you do want to see those, you can easily do a Google search for those. But uh, since the entire list is out, I don't really plan on going back and doing the leaks of the week for those cards. Because there's no real point in doing a leaks of the week when I've missed the entire thing and the entire list is out. So uh, once again, I do apologize for that. But anyways, um, we're now we're back to it. Summer vacation has started, so... Yeah, uh, back to Leaks of the Week, and what better way to start it off again than with Love Live. Everyone's favorite series, am I right? Of course it is, it's everyone's favorite series. But anyways, uh, Love Live uh, Leaks, if you are not familiar, uh, Love Live is getting a new movie booster. A full booster, which is just ridiculous, like, they don't need any more boosters. It's nice, but, uh, what, playing Dota 2 without me? Whatever, um... They're getting a full movie boost. They're getting a full booster, and they're getting a new trial deck. Uh, both of those is being released on the 13th of June, which is the day the boost the movie is being released in Japan. So, a very exciting day for Love Life fans in Japan. However, for us in America, uh, not so exciting. We can look forward to the movie booster though. Oh well. But anyways, uh, with that out of the way, let's get right to it. So for Monday, first off, this is one O five K Eddie. She's an R, but however, she is number seven, which is quite important to notice. Um, if you're not familiar with how the numbering works in Y Schwartz, uh, in a typical one hundred card booster, uh, when it contains all four colors, yellow, green, red, blue, yellow starts from one to twenty five. Uh, green starts from 25 to 50, red is like 51 to 75, and blue is uh, 76 to 100, so that's how it typically works. But the fact that Eddie is number 7 is a clear indication that there is going to be no yellow in this booster. Which is quite saddening because yellow is the main color for uh, Love Life decks. It has always been the main color for uh, Love Life decks uh, since the beginning, and uh, you know, since it's going to be, since you're going to be playing yellow in your Love Life decks, uh, Bushiro might as well go all out and make yellow stupid strong, so that way, uh, you know, we don't have to make choices in our deck colors or in our deck building. But whatever, uh, that's just me ranting. And it also kind of sucks because it would be nice if Love Life got a level three Musashi uh, ability because uh, the Musashi ability only exists in yellow, and since this booster has no yellow, it is quite saddening since. Uh, we won't be getting the Musashi ability. But if Love Live did get the Musashi ability, then uh, the set would be stupid strong. But uh, that's just me crying. Anyways, uh, let's just get to it. So 105k R Eddie, Music, Wafuku. Um, she combos with the Gold Sack. Oh, Gold Sack, they're bringing it back. Uh, they brought it back in the Madoka booster, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. And they're bringing it back with the... Um, Love Live Booster, which is also hilarious. So, combos with the Gold Sack here. It is a Climax Rare. What it does is, uh, when this card declares an attack with the Gold Sack, you may pay cost, which is 1. If you do, look at the top 4 cards of your deck, choose one music character amongst them, show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, discard the remaining amount, and put it to the waiting room, and this card gains plus 2k until the end of the turn. Uh, this card, uh, the Climax Combo is okay. Um, it breaks even, uh, it's guaranteed because you pay one on attack, you don't have to reverse anything, so the search is guaranteed, however the search is kind of weak because, uh, once, cause like, uh, because you only need to, because you only get to look at the top four cards, so your choices are kind of limited, uh, but it's nice because it's uh, guaranteed, like I said, uh, it gains plus 2k, so it'll be 7k, the gold sack will give 1k 1 soul, so it will be a 108k if you do climax combo. Uh, but, like I said, uh, searching is limited because you only get to look at top 4, and also it's combos with the gold sack. Uh, gold sack, not the strongest of triggers. Uh, when Bushiroad stopped printing gold sack, 
for like the last year and a half or like two years. Uh, it wasn't missed. I mean, yeah, Gold Sack is cool and all, but uh, let's be honest. Eh, like Gold Sack's like whatever. So the trigger, the Gold Sack trigger is not that great, and it really sucks when you Gold Sack, and then you hit a climax, and you don't know till like your first deck refresh. It's like, oh shit, where's one of my climaxes? Oh, freaking Gold Sack ruining my uh, compression. So yeah, uh, another reason why Gold Sack kind of sucks, because you don't know what you're, trigger what you're stalking. So yeah, uh, Gold Sack, not the strongest of... Uh, Trigger. So the fact that it, tr it combos with the gold sack, and the searching is kind of limited, uh, not a too huge of a fan of this card. So yeah, uh, not too. I don't think it's that good. I think there's uh, there's better uh, on attack search options. Like you could use even like the level zero Maki climax combo from the extra booster, the one that combos with the uh, door to dreams, uh, wind trigger. I think that one's like uh, better. Because you get to search your entire deck for it, and it combos with the wind trigger. So I think, like, uh, like that's just one example of a better on-attack search climax combo. You could be running over this Eddie, in my opinion. Let's go on to the next card. It's a 1045R Nozomi. Me. She's music. What she does is, uh, for every marker underneath this card, it gains plus 1 level and plus 1500 power. <gasps> Can you guess what his other effect is? When this card reverses its opponent in battle, you may place the top card of your deck... Uh, put it to the bottom of this card to serve as a marker. So very similar to the uh, Asuna from Sword Art Online, the 1045 Under the Rain Asuna. I forgot her name, but very similar to that. An exact copy of that actually, except this one is in green while the one in SAO is in yellow. And similar to the one in Idol Master, I think it's Rio. I think it's that one. Uh, I think there's two characters in the picture, but uh, pretty much an exact copy to the Idol Master one as well. Um, and both of those are in green, so it's pretty much an exact copy of the Idol Master one. But nonetheless, uh, a very, very familiar effect. However, a very definitely a very good effect. Um, I'm sure many players have been snowballed by the 1-0 Marker Asuna in the past. So uh, I'm sure many of you guys do know that this card can be quite devastating. Uh, but I guess I'll just go over to it really quickly. Uh, this card can be really hard to stop slash near impossible for your opponent to stop. Uh, depending on what they're playing, just because uh, this card can gain a lot of power really fast. Because if it kills one thing, it becomes a 106k. If it kills another thing, it becomes a 1075. And then after that, it just becomes that much, much harder. It becomes 9k, becomes 10.5, becomes like what? 11, 12, 12k. And it gains extra level. So af like after it kills one thing, you can't level one suicide into it. It becomes really difficult to side attack. And with, with because it has such huge power and the fact that it's impossible to side most of the time uh, makes this card very annoying to deal with once it starts rolling. So yeah, the downside to this card is of course is this card gets owned by Wind Trigger. If it gets uh, Wind Triggered, it's gonna be really hard for this card to get markers. Uh, if this card doesn't get to reverse anything, it's a very low power, uh, very underwhelming uh, level one card. And yeah, so this card does have its downside. Uh, like I said, if it gets wind triggered, that really sucks. If it doesn't manage to kill anything, that sucks. But if it does get rolling, it can be really hard for your opponent to stop. So uh, definitely, even though I say that, it's still definitely a solid card. So um, yeah, definitely happy that Love Live did get this card. I also like how it's in green and it's a level 1 card. Before, when you ran green in Love Live... Um, like, it was usually, like, like green was just kind of like a splash color. You ran, like, level 0 greens, and you ran, like, level 3 greens for, like, the Eddie or the Nico level 3s, the Clock Trooper ones. And, like, the, your level 2 game and your level 1 game had pretty much, like, no green cards in it. But now, uh, there's good green level 1s now. Now you can run this Nozomi uh, in your level 1 game if you do choose to run green, which is nice because I thought it was just kind of lame. Like, oh, I'm running green just for... This knows for just for level three Nico slash level three Eddie. It wasn't like it was just a splash, and it was it was kind of lame. But now, uh, you know, now level one can be more diverse in Love Life because the level one game for Love Life is really like, uh, really boring slash like staple. You just run like the one O Umi, the one O Eddie from both from the first booster. You could run like the one one Clock Encore Umi. You could run a couple level one Suiciders from like the first booster. So it's kind of bland a level 1 game, very simple but very uh, effective, but uh, like the addition of this Nozomi is nothing crazy, but uh, you know, it adds more options to level 1 game, it's, it's, and I like that a lot, so I think it's nice. So 
yeah, really good card. And I've talked about this those only way too long. Sorry about that. Anyways, once again, the gold sack. Cute card. Very cute. And, uh, 2-1 yellow event. Uh, this is in yellow, this is yellow because this is in the trial deck, as you can see this TD. I'm assuming the entire trial deck is going to be yellow, just like how the first trial deck was. And I guess they're going to compensate for the lack of yellow in the movie booster by adding the, all the yellow cards in the trial deck. Which I guess makes sense, but I don't know, I would have preferred if they had yellow in the boost, in the, in the normal movie booster. Because that way we can get more powerful yellow cards. But, uh, whatever. Anyways, 2-1 event, uh, Valentine. Uh, what this card does is, uh, you, when you play this event, you get to look for up to one music character, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck, then choose one of your characters, it gains plus 2k until the end of the turn. Uh, for a trial deck card, definitely not bad. It's a very simple, but very, uh, very simple event, but that doesn't mean it's bad. You pay one, uh, you search, and you give a music character plus 2k, so not too bad at all. However, for a normal deck, Eh, it's like, whatever, because uh, Love Life, it's really easy to search out what you want. Um, the 1-0 Brainstorm, which 99.99% .99 of uh, Love Life decks run, uh, pretty much you always brainstorm in Love Life because you always have the Umi in the back, and uh, it's, most of the time you at least hit one Brainstorm. But you Usually when you brainstorm, you usually hit one or two Climaxes per turn, and you usually get to search. So really easy to get... Ooh, sorry. Not right now. Um, I should. Anyways, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. But because the Ubi makes it so easy to search out cards, um, I don't think Love Live needs a search event. You you could use that extra space for other cards because, like I said, it's really easy to search out cards already in Love Live. I don't think I mentioned this, but um, the movie the movie booster is obviously based off the movie. However, the Trial deck is based off the iOS game, so if the art on the trial deck cards look familiar, they should. If you do, pl if you play the iOS game, the art on this should look very familiar. I have that Nozomi. I actually really wanted that Maki, but I didn't get that Maki, which made me really sad. I rolled, I super scouted like three times. I wasted 150 damn love gems, and I didn't get it. So I cried myself to sleep that night. Eh, I guess I'll talk about waifu decks. Um. Since uh, there's a since Love Live waifu deck is quite prominent, uh, the Eddy for a waifu deck is okay. The art's really cute, so people will probably run it just because it has a really cute art. So I guess in the waifu deck, um, I guess this Eddy would be pretty good. Yeah, I think in the in the Eddy waifu deck, this actually be not bad at all. The Nozomi waifu deck definitely this is a staple card. Uh, Nozomi level one game is pretty lackluster. All they have is the one O. Um, the 1-0 from the extra booster, the one that's a 106k, and uh, besides that, that's like the only really good uh, level 1 Nozomi has, so now that Nozomi has this 1-0, it should definitely be a great boost to the wa Nozomi waifu deck. Anyways, on to Tuesday. Um, next up is this uh, at Umi. She's 3-2, 10k, double R, uh, music and wafuku. What she does is, when she's played from hand to stage, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is a music character, you may deal one to your opponent. Of course, this damage can't be cancelled. And uh, she has another effect. She has a startup where you can pay one, tap two music characters. If you do, choose one of your opponent's level zero or lower characters and send it to the owner's waiting room. Uh, this Umi is nothing crazy, nothing like. Yeah, nothing crazy, nothing special. However, uh, definitely a solid card. Uh, she sits at 10k, which is like, you know, normal. Um, she has a good on play effect. You can play her, reveal top. If it's a music, deal one to your opponent. Most of the time, it should be a music, so you should most of the time be dealing one to your opponent. So, yeah, definitely a solid uh, on play ability, a solid game ending ability. And her other secondary effect is okay, it's not that great. Um, Against certain decks, it should be pretty good, depending on how dependent your opponent is on level zeros. Uh, some decks are really dependent on level zero assists. So if they are, then of course this Umi is really good. However, if your opponent's uh, deck is not dependent on level zeros assists, uh, then it's not as good because this card can't hit anywhere. You just choose any of your opponent's level zeros. Um, doesn't have to be in the front or the back row. Can't be anywhere. So, yeah, uh, they're definitely pretty good against certain matchups. 
I guess the only downside to the second effect is you have to tap two of your music characters. And most of the time you're tapping your back row for like the brainstorm or uh, you're tapping them for the double attacker uh, the double attacker um, from the extra booster since that one requires a tap on play. So if you play one of those then you really can't tap your back row for this Umi. So that kind of sucks that you have to tap the, your back row to use her effect. But it's understandable of course. So um, secondary effect is not the greatest. And you might not be able to use it a lot of the time because you're, like I said, you're tapping your back row for either brainstorming or for double attacking, what have you. But still, uh, it's nice to have the secondary effect. And like I said, the first effect is pretty good. Uh, and I do think uh, definitely a nice tech card. Uh, don't think you should be running multiple of these cards. Um, at most, you should like at most you could run two of these Umis. I don't think you need to run three or four of these because Love Live has a lot better game op ending options. Like uh, they have clock shooters, they have uh, double attackers. So yeah, I think those are better game ending options than this on play burn. So definitely, I think a solid uh, tech card. Uh, two at max, I think. I don't think you need to be running three or four of these. Uh, I think it'll I think it'll probably replace the Happy Maker Kotori because uh, the Happy Maker Kotori is guaranteed. However, you have to pay one to burn, which is like, eh. I'd rather just hope for the on play reveal top and burn. Because uh, I think the extra stock is quite nice. So I think the fact that she saves stock is better. And I think, I do think she will replace the Happy Maker Kotori. Actually, I don't know. The guaranteed burn from Kotori is really nice as well. Hmm, I don't know. It's hard to choose, but uh, definitely, like I said, nonetheless, very solid card. And a uh, very solid card for the waifu deck as well. Uh, I already think the Ubi waifu deck is really good. Um, I would say even stronger than, yeah, really strong uh, waifu deck. I would say Umi and Eddie, definitely those two have the strongest waifu deck out of the entire Love Live cast. Umi has a very solid uh, level 0 game. She has like Suicider 0035s. She has good level 1. She has 1065s, 1 1 uh, Clock Encore characters, a very good assist. Level 2, she has a really strong level 2 game. And at level 3, her level 3 game was pretty lackluster because she didn't have a game ender, which was, uh, which was, yeah, she didn't have a game ending uh, card in the before, but now that she does have a game ender, the Umi Waifu deck becomes that much better, and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely awesome. The Umi Waifu deck is now more becoming more scarier, and the Umi Waifu deck does have an on on play top checker. She has the zero zero three five no brand girl Umi from the second booster, the school idol festival booster. That one on play reveal top. Uh, a little dangerous because if the level zero hits a climax, and you of course eat damage, but. Uh, you know, you could use that to try to guarantee yourself the burn with Umi. So uh, in the waifu deck, you have a couple ways to guarantee the burn from this level 3. So definitely, definitely, definitely awesome. And I think the art is really cute. The art on, the, the art on the movie booster is just damn cute in general. Like, look at this. How can you say no? Anyways, let's go on. 2-1 Honoka, 3 KR Music and Sweets. Um, what she does is... Uh, when this card is played from half to stage, you may pay cost, which is discard one card. If you do, choose one of your music characters from your waiting room and return it to your hand. It has another effect of when this card is reversed in battle, uh, and the level of the card, uh, and the level of the card battling is level two or lower, you may place that character to reverse. So it is a level two suicider, as you can see. And this Honoka is okay. Um, her first effect uh, is not bad it's pretty much uh, a hand filter a hand fix because you play the honoka you discard a card but then you get to salvage a card so you don't plus you don't minus you break even so not bad you could discard climaxes and uh, yeah it's a free hand fix essentially on play which is not bad at all and she is a level 2 suicider so uh, not not the worst card ever a free hand fix and you get to suicide with opponents level 2s or lowers which is awesome however uh, that being said there's not that many decks that run a level 2 game nowadays. Most like most decks don't even run level 2s. Now they just run like level 3s that come out at level 2. So uh, if your opponent is running that, then this card is pretty much an expensive level 1 suicider that hand fixes. Which sucks because the level 1 Marika from Nisekoi is a level 1 suicider that hand fixes. And uh, 
If your opponent's not living, running level 2s, you're running an expensive Marika, which sucks. But, um, yeah, because like I said, a lot of decks like don't even run level 3s, like Nisekoi, their level 2 game is level 3 Onodera. Uh, Terraformers, they have Joseph, which uh, comes out at level 2. Um, what other decks? Level, uh, the girl from beta, the yellow builds, just slap down level 3. I don't know her name, but yeah, Girl from Beta, they have uh, level 3s that come out level 2. Uh, just a couple off the top of my head, so um, a lot of decks don't even play level 2s, and if they don't play level 2s, which most decks don't, then this Honoka just kind of sucks. So uh, if like, like maybe down the road, if level 2 becomes more prominent and a lot of sets start actually running level 2s, then uh, this Honoka might be good. But as of right now, because so many decks don't even run a level 2 game, their level 2 game consists of level 3s that come out at level 2, this Honoka honestly isn't that great. So, unfortunately, this Honoka not too good. Uh, in the waifu deck, this card does have some interesting synergy, because uh, the Honoka waifu deck does have a really good uh, level one, level 2 assist. It's a 2-1, uh, 1k global. But every time one of your characters get reversed in battle, you get to give another character plus 1k power. And since this Honoka is a suicider, when this card suicides into the opponent, you get to give more power via the uh, global assist. So it has some good synergy in the uh, Honoka waifu deck, but in the main serious uh, love life deck, uh, the meta right now just has no level 2, so no real point in this card. Next up, this Kotori 105k common, uh, Music and Nurse. What she does is she's a 500 global, which is nice, but she has another effect of um, when your other Happy Maker Kotori is played from hand to stage and this card is in stand, you may pay cost, which is place her and one other card to rest. If you do, place two music characters from your waiting room and put it to your stock. I might as well pull out the Kotori out since uh, we're talking about it. Happy Maker Kotori. Right here, this is the Happy Maker Kotori. Oops, spoilers. Is the level three from the uh, Volume Two booster, and yeah, um, clearly this is like an indication that they're trying to promote waifu decks, and yeah, this is definitely a waifu deck card because first of all, this is a 500 global, which is nice. However, Love Live already has a very, 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 very good 500 global in the 10500 global Umi Brainstormer. Uh, that card is better than this because yes, this is a 500 global. However, her secondary effect only is relevant at level three because uh, for her second effect, secondary effect effect to happen, you need to play the Kotori from your hand. Uh, there's no changer, there's no way to play this Kotori early from your hand, so you can't get her second effect out early. Her second effect is only relevant at level 3, and uh, yeah, clearly a waifu deck card. But uh, if you do play the level 3 Kotori, then um, you get to get, you tap her and something else in your back row. Uh, you get two stock, and you get two music characters and you put them to your stock. So essentially this Kotori becomes free because this Kotori costs two. You play the Kotori, you tap her, you tap something else, and then you gain two stock. And then, uh, yeah. Also this Kotori has a on play pay one burn. Can be a little expensive, but uh, definitely with the 500 global assist, the on play burn becomes much cheaper and definitely uh, a lot easier to do. So like I said, uh, there's no reason to play this in your normal builds, but for the waifu deck, uh, yeah, why not run it? It's fun. It's cute. And yeah, why not? Kotori already had a 500 global though, so... Eh, actually no, why not run it? It's funny. And lastly, the trial deck card. 3, 2, 10k, TD. The level 3 for the trial deck. I don't know if the trial deck is going to have more level 3s, but as of right now, I'm going to assume this is going to be the level 3 for the trial deck. Which I'm kind of surprised at, that they, re they revealed this level 3 so early into the leaks, like... You know, usually they reveal the level 3 a little down the line, so this might not be the only level 3 in the set, just because of how early they revealed it, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Anyway, 3-2, 10k, 2 soul, music sw swimsuit, um, if 3 or more other music characters, the card gains plus 1k power, and uh, this card heals. Eh, honestly, not too big fan of this card. Um, yeah, honestly, in your normal competitive builds, there are better healers, with more relevant effects, 
pretty much this is a 3k this is a 3 2 11k healer because after she heals she's only an 11k body which is like whatever that's nothing um it's nothing it's it's nothing amazing and uh yeah so in the normal decks there's better healer options so normal decks don't run this card uh in the actually eh nah eh nah don't run this card in normal decks um for the waifu decks eh once again not too outstanding because honoka already had a healer the happy maker honoka from the volume 2 booster already healed and it had a pretty decent climax combo so and it came out and you could change into it so eh for the waifu decks like honoka already had a healer so eh not too for, so even for the waifu decks this card is like nothing exciting either either so pretty disappointing level 3 in general uh, pretty disappointing for normal decks and pretty disappointing for like Honoka waifu decks. So, eh, kind of what a bummer. Anyways, on to Wednesday. Uh, three two ten K R, Nico, two soul. Kind of surprising. She's just an R. Uh, what she does is uh, when she's played from Hansi stage, you get to heal, and she combos with the gold bar here, which is a climax rare. What she does is uh, when the gold when you play the gold bar. And this is in the front row. You may pay cost, which is pay one, discard a card. If you do, choose one level two or lower character in your clock, place it to any border on the stage, and discard gains plus 3k until the end of the turn. So it is essentially a double heal if you climax combo, because one, Nico heals herself, and two, when you play the gold bar, you pay cost, which is pay one, discard a card. If you do, you choose a level two or lower character in your clock, and you put it onto the stage. And since the card character goes from clock to stage, of course you essentially heal one damage. And it's nice because it gets past anti heal because uh, anti heal specifically says from clock to waiting room. This card is from clock to stage, so this card does get passed around anti heal. And uh, this Nico gains big power when you do, so uh, double healing and she gains big power. But eh, still like eh, it's just like whatever. Um. Like, yeah, it's honestly just like a uh, very whatever card. Uh, her climax combo is cool. You get to double heal, but uh, it's kind of it's pretty heavy because the gold bar itself is a minus. So you lose one hand size from the gold bar, and then you have to discard a card on top of that because her climax combo requires you to discard a card. So you lose two hand size. Uh, you pay one, which isn't expensive. So you lose two hand size, and you get to play a level two from your clock, uh, which is like since you only get to play a level 2 from your clock. Uh, since you play this Nico at level 3, the level 2 you bring out from your clock isn't really going to be much of a threat. So that kind of sucks. And only this card gains power. The card you bring out from the clock doesn't gain any power as well. So the card you bring out from the clock is gonna be like nothing scary. But um, yeah, it's not, not gonna be very scary. So like it's cool. I like the idea of the double healing. I think it's a fun, cool idea. But uh, honestly, I rather like uh, I rather have climax combos at game end instead of like healing. You know, like if I wanted to heal, I'll just play normal healers. I'll play like the double attacking healer. Uh, yeah, so I rather just go with like the normal healing round instead of this whole double healing shenanigans. So yeah, unfortunately, I like the idea a lot. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. But uh, eh, not too big. Of, I don't think it's gonna work out. However, for the waifu deck, uh, should be pretty good. Nico didn't have a healer before, but now that Nico does have a healer, uh, that's really good for the waifu deck. And uh, the Nico waifu, the Nico has uh, a two-two that gains uh, like she has a two-two from the first booster that gains power on uh, your turn. So uh, she has a she has good she has pretty strong two-twos, and uh, the fact that she can bring out these strong 2-2s two with her climax combo uh, is pretty good because the 2-2s two are actually pretty big powered and so they can actually do they actually do pose a threat at level 3 because they are such high powered so for the Nico waifu deck should be pretty good because uh, like I said A she didn't have a healer and B she does have some pretty uh, relevant 2-2s two so should be good in the Nico, Nico definitely staple in the Nico waifu deck which is good because uh, in your normal Love Life decks, you're not gonna run two twos. So like the only level two you really run in the Love Life deck is like the two one Umi from the first booster, and that's just like whatever. 
like Big Whoop, you pulled that out at level 3 with the Climax combo, that's nothing scary. So yeah, definitely a uh, staple in the waifu deck. In a normal deck, I don't think it's going to work out to be honest. Next up, TD card 0025, uh, music. When this is played from hand to stage, this card gains plus 1500 power until the end of the turn. Uh, nothing special, nothing scary. We've already uh, Love Live already has this ability in the Mokuto cards from the first booster. Um, yeah, pretty much an exact copy of that. Uh, the only difference is this card has Nozomi in its name. The Mokuto cards from the first booster, they don't actually have a name. They're just called like Mokuto something something something. So, uh, of course, definitely this is staple in the Nozomi Waifu deck. Um, if you're not a Nozomi fan, you're gonna play the Mokuto cards because yeah, because you get to have any character. Any character can be that card. So yeah, nothing special. On to Thursday. What is this? I can already feel the Muse fans screaming at their pants at the next few cards. Once again, cementing Love Life's position as a power flagship series. Definitely, Love Life is a very powerful series, and I'm creeping my pants right now. Anyways, uh, one o four five uncommon uh Rin. Music Wafuku. When you have three or more music characters, the card gains plus 1k power. And it has another ability of uh, this card kind of car like, This card climaxes with the plus two soul here. Um, when this card declares an attack with the plus two soul, this card gains plus 1500 power and the following ability until the end of this turn. When this card reverses its opponent in battle, you may place that character to the bottom of its owner's deck. Uh, definitely, I not a not not a bad card. She's one o four five. Um, but if you have three or more music characters, which is easy to accomplish, she gains one k. So she has vanilla power. And a climax combo is not bad. Uh, combos with the plus two soul. And like I said in the past, plus two souls are a little iffy because uh, you're swinging for a lot of damage, and if uh, meaning that it has a high chance to cancel, but uh. If it if it sticks, then it can really push you far ahead. However, if your opponent cancels like all three of the attacks, then it can really push you far behind. So plus two soul a little iffy, but uh, not but not the worst thing ever. Uh, this card gains plus fifteen, and when it kills something, you can put it to the bottom of the owner's deck. Uh, not bad because uh, she her combo is entirely costless. She's costless herself. She hits for she hits okay power. She's five five. Which is 500 more than a normal card that has a climax combo. Most level ones that are costless, uh, that climax combo are only 5k, much like this Eddie. So the fact that she's 5-5 with a climax combo is good, and a climax combo is not bad because uh, it's plus 15, so she'll be 107k, and when she kills something, you put it to the bottom of the owner's deck, so it gets passed around encore, which a lot of level ones are dependent on, and uh, you get to push for a lot of damage. So definitely, uh. Not a bad card. Her be this card being uncommon, not bad. Not a bad uh, uncommon card. I probably won't run it because I'm not a big fan of plus two souls, but uh, definitely not a bad card. Completely costless uh, combo that hits decent power and can't get past Encore. So yeah, definitely solid. Actually, the more I talk about it, the more I like it. So maybe I will try it out. Who knows? And it's pretty cute. Let's go on. Uh, one one six k uncommon um, Maki, music and wafuku. Uh, oh, all oh, right, my uh, waifu deck, um, and that uh, analysis. Um, yeah, definitely solid for the waifu deck as well because uh, completely costless and gets passed around on course. So for the waifu deck, uh, I think it's really good. So yeah, and Rin doesn't have a lot of good climax combos either. So yeah. Oh, and she's also Rin, so this card can also work with the healer. With the heal event, so hmm, maybe it will be good in the normal decks. Who knows? But actually, not bad. Anyways, Maki, um, one one six k uncommon music wafuku. Uh, during your opponent's turn, this card gains five hundred power for uh each music character you control. And it, so before assist, if you have a full field of music, she's uh one one eight k, and uh, she she cannot not be reversed by opponent's auto abilities, meaning she can't be level one suicided. And this Maki is like whatever, um, cause she only gets 500 power during your opponent's turn. So on offense, before assist, she's only 6k power, so she's really susceptible to dying to backups. 
like, because she's such low power. Like, yeah, it's cool that she's high power on defense and she's unsuicidable, which can be quite problematic for your uh, certain decks to deal with. But like on offense, like, if you can't kill anything either because you're such low power, then you're not getting much accomplished. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could play like climaxes and like side for damage, but still, I'd rather be killing things. You know, you want to kill your opponent's characters as well, so... Um... Yeah, not that good of a card, because she's just was so... She's just so low powered on your on your turn, she's only 6k. Like, that's too weak. So, for the normal uh, Love Life decks, I don't really think this card is going to be used. For the Waifu deck, this card can be um, okay, because... Um, she's, she's very weak on defense. However, um, on offense, uh, the Maki Waifu deck does have the Baki event, the one that you on um, play. You uh, when you play the event, you clock yourself, like draw three, ditch one, and then you give a character plus two K. Uh, you can give this character two K. So, uh, and in the Maki Waifu deck, that card is actually really good. So, uh, if you're playing that, you're gonna be playing that event in the Maki Waifu deck, and you could give this character a lot of power. And if you can give this character a lot of power, then this card can be both strong on offense and on defense in the Maki Waifu deck. So in the Maki Waifu deck, I don't think this card will be too bad at all. However, in the normal decks, I, uh, it's just too low power. It's like one one six k, that's killing me. So, uh, don't think it's gonna be used in the normal decks. Lastly, Hanayo one o six five common music. What she does is, uh, when this card declares an attack, you must mill the top two cards of your deck. This is mandatory. If there's a climax amongst those cards, this card loses two soul until the end of the turn. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, she's an oversized 1-0, an extremely oversized 1-0, so she did need to have a downside. And hers is, uh, you know, mill top two. If there's a climax, this card loses plus, this loot card loses two soul for the turn. So this card will most of the time be dealing zero damage. So, eh, kind of sucks. But uh, still, this card does have its benefits. Uh, one, it's extremely oversized for a 1-0. It's 106.5, so that's really scary. Um, it doesn't lose any power. So like, if you like, you attack something, and if you do hit a climax, you don't deal any damage. However, you get to reverse your opponent's characters, so you still kill your opponent's characters, which is good. So, uh, yeah, you still kill your opponent's characters, very high power, and uh, if you run plus two soul, like, uh, if you run like a Rin Hanayo deck, if you run this plus two soul climax with Hanayo, then, um, then uh, you get to play around her down her side effects, her, her downside, because with the plus two soul, she's three soul base, and then um, you lose two soul if you hit a climax, so she'll at least be dealing one damage. So if you're running plus two soul, then uh, you can play around her downsides, which is really cool. So yeah, you can play around her downsides with uh, certain climaxes, or even when she attacks, and if you trigger like a, a, t a, a two soul trigger, then uh, she still deals damage, because once again, she's three soul. Or if you're attacking directly, she's two soul base, and then you trigger a clim if you trigger like a one soul, then uh, you still deal one damage. So you can play around her downside, but uh, you know, of course her downside being her downside is still very relevant, but I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to point out uh, the way she can play around her downside. So, uh, you know, it sucks not being able to deal damage, but you can play around it. So I think for a common, this Hanayo is pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty cool common, I'm not going to lie. So uh, I think it's a pretty cool card. So definitely uh, not... I don't think it's a... I don't think it's going to be used just because it's a bit inconsistent. But I think it's funny, and uh, I do think you can play around it. So yeah, uh, definitely a solid comment in my opinion. <laughs> um, for the Hanayo waifu decks, um, I think it's pretty good. If you want to run like the gimmicky alpaca um, Hanayo deck, then you can run the, the Hanayo alpaca combo runs the plus two soul climax, so if you're running like a Hanayo alpaca waifu deck, then of course you can run this Hanayo with it because you're going to be running four plus two souls anyways, and so when you play a plus two soul, you already play around this Hanayo's downside, so yeah, uh, for the Hanayo waifu decks, uh, pretty good, and if you're running the alpaca deck, you might as well be staple because when you play a plus two soul, you get around her downside completely. 
But for the normal decks, like I said, most of the time you're not going to be running a plus two soul. So her downside is pretty relevant in the normal decks, but still, uh, pretty good common. <laughs> Anyways, another trial deck card, 2125 TD uh, Music and Swimsuit. What she does is she's a 2-5 backup, and she has another effect of when you use this backup, reveal the top card of your library. If that card is a music character, give the battling card plus 1k until the end of the turn. This card is an exact copy of the theme from the extra booster. So I don't really see why they reprinted this card, but whatever. Uh, this Umi is really cute, so yeah, I'm not going to complain. So pretty much an exact copy of the Dean. Uh, definitely a solid backup. So yeah, um, if you ran, yeah, uh, a very solid level 2 backup. So ah, I guess that's all I'm really going to say about it. Really cute too. Lastly, Friday, not a level 3. However, a very good card. 0025 double R Music Wafuku Eddie. Uh, during the start of your opponent's attack phase, uh, you may place the top card of your deck to the library or the waiting room. If you do, if that card if, is a music character, you may move this card to an empty border on your center stage. Yes, finally, so happy. Love Life now has a good runner. Finally, it only took them what one, two, three, only took them five boosters, but now Bushi Road has graced Love Life players with a runner which is very nice. I've talked about Runner many times in the past. I'm sure many of you guys do know what a Runner is. I'm sure many of you guys do know how good a Runner is. So the fact that Love Live now has a Runner is awesome. So I'm not going to go into it, but definitely very happy. It sucks it's double R because it's going to be hella expensive to get, but uh, what can you do? Next up, Dean 105k Common Music. What she does is... um. During the start of your opponent's attack phase, if this card is in the front row, you may pay cost, which is pay one, discard the Happy Maker Adin from your hand, which is the level three Adin from the last booster, this one here. So, uh, yeah, you during the start of your opponent's attack phase, if she's in the front row, you pay one, discard that Adin. If you do, choose one of your characters and this card, and both of them gets plus 3k until the end of this turn. Oh wow, this is really long. Um, so yeah, obviously this card is once again being designed for the Rin Waifu decks because uh, first of all, this Rin card, you're not going to be running like three or four of these in your normal deck. This card doesn't game end. It's cool and all, but definitely you're not going to be running multiple of these in the normal decks because they're just better level three options. So like in the normal decks, like if anything, this is a tech card. If anything, in a normal Love Life deck, you're going to be running one or two of these Deans at max. If you're running, like, let's say you're running two of these Deans, running two of the Deans is not consistent enough to get this Deans off, ability off consistently. To get this Deans ability off consistently, you need to run four of this, three to four of the Happy Makers. So clearly, you're only going to be running three or four of the Happy Maker Deans in the Waifu decks. So clearly, this is, once again, a Waifu deck card. So... In the normal decks, unplayable, to be honest, just unplayable. In the waifu decks, however, uh, not bad. Um, It's a pretty much a very scary backup, but she's in the front and another character. If she's in the front, you give two of your characters plus 3k power, which can be very difficult for them to deal with, uh, which is nice because you can essentially pay one, discard a card, or you pretty much pay one, discard this ring, to save two of your characters. So in total, you get to plus one, essentially you plus one because you save two characters for discarding one card, which is not bad at all. So for the waifu decks, I think it's pretty cool. Definitely not bad. So for the waifu decks, I think it's a uh, staple because Rin doesn't have very, very, many very good monos. So yeah, good for the uh, Rin waifu decks. Lastly, more trial deck cards, 105k Kotori, Music and Swimsuit. Uh, she combos with the flare trigger here, a uh, yell to you. A yell to you. That's that's kind of weird. Anyways, um, uh, when this card declares an attack with the uh, flare trigger, you may pay cost, which is one. If you do, search your deck for up to one music character, show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. 
Uh, I mean, Love Live has so many of these on attack searching abilities by now, like the level one Maki or the level zero Maki from the extra booster, uh, the level zero swimsuit, uh, Love Live cards in the first booster that comboed with the plus two soul. I mean, uh, and like, yeah, they already have like other combos that on attack pay one search. Uh, you know, they're not bad at all, definitely. And this one's not bad at all, too. Um, I mean, this one combos with the flare trigger. Anyways, um, man, I should really. Damn it! Oh my. People. No. Stop! Please excuse the language. Anyways, um... Ah, jeez, that totally ruined my train of thought. Um... Love Live already has a lot of these on attack, pay one, search, climax combos. So, uh... And, you know, to be honest, nobody really ran those climax combos in, like, a normal serious deck. So I don't think this Kotori is really gonna be changing anything. However, um, it's not a bad addition because, um... Uh, this one combos with the flare trigger. Which is nice, because Flare Trigger is pretty scary nowadays, so, um, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, Love Live already had these Climax combos very similar to this Kotori, so the fact that a new one came out, I don't think it's really going to change anything. Like, it combos the Flare Trigger, but I don't think that's going to change anyone's mind on this, so I don't think it's going to change anything, it's nothing exciting, because we already have this Climax combo, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's for a Trial Deck card, a uh, very solid Climax combo. For a trial deck, definitely solid. But for the normal Love Live decks, it's like, whatever. Uh, I guess it's good for the Kotori Waifu decks, because the Kotori Waifu decks uh, didn't have much going on for the level 1 game, except like the 1-1-6-5 one, one, with Clock Encore. Besides that, there wasn't really much else I can think of. And the 1-0 Suiciders, I guess. But now they have a 1-0 Climax combo that searches with the, uh, that searches, and that's kind of the uh, Flare Trigger. So yeah, for the waifu decks, definitely not bad. And that is all for this week. I feel like there wasn't very much exciting things this week, but this is a 47 minute video. Probably because I talk too much when there's love live uh, leaks happening. But anyways, uh, a solid week. I don't think nothing too crazy has been released, but definitely uh, a nice week. Uh, this Eddie, like I said, eh, I think there are better choices than this. Like, even the tri I think even, like, the Trial Deck Climax combo is better than this one. So I don't think- there's better options than this Eddie. This Nozomi, definitely very solid. Uh, this is a Vent, uh, good for a TD, but not gonna be used for the normal decks in my opinion. Umi, uh, definitely good card. I think I'll- I'll probably try one or two out in the normal decks once this card gets released. So yeah, definitely not a bad card for the Waifu deck. Very, very, very good. Because Umi Waifu deck didn't have a game ender before, but now they do. Honoka. Um, not really relevant today in today's meta because no one runs level 2s anymore. Um, for the for the Honoka Waifu deck, uh, has some very cool synergy, but like I said, not really relevant in today's meta. Has a cool hand, has a nice hand filter though, but still, not very good. Kotori, obviously for the Waifu deck. Honoka, eh, both a letdown for Waifu deck and for normal deck. Nico, I like the idea, I think it's funny, I think it's cool, but uh, once again, I think it's reserved for the Waifu decks. Uh, Nozomi. Eh, I'll stick with my Mokuto cards. Rin. Uh, not bad. Definitely not bad. I, I, li I like it. I like the Climax combo. Okay. I like this Climax combo. I think it's good. Uh, Maki. Eh, Waifu deck. Hanayo. Interesting card. Interesting common. But I don't think, uh, I don't think it'll be ran. But, uh, there are ways to play around the down side. So, I think it's cool that way. Uh, I like Umi more than Rin. So, I like this Umi. So I will be running this one over my Umi back for I'll be running this back up over the Ring backup. And definitely the best card this week. Oh yeah. Anyways, yeah, finally good, they got a runner. Took them long enough. The runner from the extra booster was a freaking joke, which I still ran just cause. Uh but yeah, now that they have a legit runner, definitely solid staple card in Love Life decks. And once again, a huge boon to the Eddie Waifu deck. As if the Eddie Waifu deck wasn't already strong, but now it just becomes that much stronger. 
this lean obviously waifu deck and this kotori um nothing special but a good boon to the waifu decks as well and that is all for this week guys oh crap i forgot to mention but i'm sure you guys already know i have pre-ordered love life boxes already i have pre-ordered five movie booster boxes and i have pre-ordered two trial deck boxes once again those are coming out on the 13th of june so fairly soon only what one two three four four weeks till the bo booster is released so i'll probably get it on the fifth week because it only takes it takes a week for the cards to ship out so I do be expecting box openings in five weeks i can't believe i forgot to mention that but yes once again do be expecting openings in five weeks and with that out of the way i have been talking long enough i'm thirsty as hell and my friends are bugging me and until next time